This is Lex Van Dam, a man who's about to make the biggest gamble of his life. He's bet one million dollars of his own money that he can turn eight ordinary men and women into successful city traders. What I want to do is like, I want to take people who have no previous trading experience and teach them how to trade. I want to give them all the tools that I think are necessary to do this. Then I will give them some of my money and I want to make sure that they make some more money. A top fund manager. He's going to set up the world's first hedge fund, staffed only by complete beginners. With some training, guidance and the promise of each being rewarded with a city-sized bonus at the end, they're all hoping for success. If they make money, it'd be great. No stress. And if they lose money, then there will be stress. From all walks of life, these novice traders have two months to show they can make it in the city. I've locked in a hundred pounds. Yes. But what none of them realize is just how hard it's going to be. I've seen really mentally strong people become psychologically destroyed by the world of trade. What a nightmare. Because in this game, every decision counts. Ah, it's just open. 726. What if it's at seven quid in an hour? Are you going to sell them there? Yes. Right, well, if you're going to sell them at seven quid in an hour, sell them at 726 now. Think about what you're saying. It's unbelievable. <sighs> I don't really know what I'm doing. As if it wasn't hard enough, they will have to play this game as the global markets plunge into the abyss. 900 quid. Like that. As the pressure mounts, will everyone make it to the end? It doesn't matter anymore. You've had your chance. You cannot let emotions get in the way. If you get upset, then this is your last week. Okay. I'm taking a huge risk here. And if they don't care enough, then I'll make sure they care. Can the beginners become profit-making machines? Or will the cost of success be too high for their liking and send this million dollar gamble into free fall? There's a fine line when it comes to being human beings, yeah? And now you see other people in the room responding to that, city or no city. One million dollars of his own money at stake, Lex Van Dam alone will choose the novice traders. It has to be like a diverse group of people. But we do need people who, who are able to work very hard and who are able to cope with a certain level of stress. After 16 years as a successful trader, he knows exactly what he's looking for. To qualify for a place, the applicants only need two qualities the ability to handle stress and be good at maths. What is 32 times 32? 32 times 32. Uh, 9... 904? 1, 1, What's the most pressure you've ever been under? I thrive under pressure, actually. What is 32 times 32? Oh, my brain is just not functioning, but sorry. 9,942. Would you screw someone over to get ahead? No, never. I wouldn't like to, but if I had to, I would do. Whilst thousands applied, there are only eight places. What is 32 times 32? The first to impress Lex and secure a spot... 1,024. ...is 36-year-old retired soldier Mike Tavell. I'm a good bet. Um, I've... I've got a lot of, a lot of good skills. Um, and I, I'm raw talent. After 13 years in the parachute regiment, Mike reached the rank of Major before retiring to live in Jersey. I'd been thinking about leaving the Army every day since, you know, about 1996. <laughs> you know, I'd done a long stint in Afghanistan, and I just thought, you know, 
can I, can I do this again? I've maybe had my time of selfless commitment. Now I just want to earn some, some filthy lucre. Joining Mike are the remaining seven successful applicants who will all undergo a rigorous training program. We've got eight weeks here, so we need to make money over those eight weeks. So we need to think about what is going to drive stocks over that period. If you can predict tomorrow's newspaper, you'll be very rich. Nobody asks you to be awake every night. But if you sleep really well every night, there's probably something wrong. That's the most you'll hear me speak, ever. Okay. <laughs> From Lincolnshire, 34-year-old shopkeeper Amit Joppenputra sees this as an opportunity to get himself a better life. I mean, just walking out, walking out to the street, you know, it's different completely, obviously, you know, instead of selling um, Mars bars and tea bags, you know, I'm probably going to try and sell shares in Vodafone and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's different. I just want to find out more and see if I can cope with it and see if I can understand the subject a bit more. The group have just two weeks to get up to speed and will be trained by leading city experts. There's no right way to trade. There is no rule book. What there is is different people finding what suits them and makes money. They'll cover everything, from generating ideas... Uh, we're interested in uh, trading on the stock Benfield, BFD. Could you give me a... ...to phoning up and placing a trade with a broker. 245 and 3 quarters, 46 and 3 quarters. Uh, quite a thin size at the moment, Simon. From Croydon, Oxford-educated IT engineer Simon Brew is keen to learn as much as possible. His grand plan is eventually to trade from home using his savings and provide a more comfortable retirement for himself and his wife. Well, I'm just hoping you'll make our fortune. Well, <laughs> it won't be our fortune anyway. Uh, the deal no, is no, basically... after you finished. Oh, after. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm seeing this very much as an alternative I'm not career once, once this is passed by. Yes, well, just don't do a Nick Leeson. Oh. <laughs> The team are also taught how to decipher highly complex technical analysis. Basically what it is, it's a mathematical representation of momentum in the market. As well as essential insights into trading psychology. In all aspects of human activity, there's a tendency towards overconfidence. Once you've understood the rules of the game, the challenge is controlling your temperament. 26-year-old Cleo Folks is an ex-vet who lives near Stourbridge in the Midlands. At the moment, she's working for her dad in the family firm, a 300-year-old engineering and property business. My family has got money, but that is no reflection on me because it's theirs, it's not mine, and that's my opinion to life. I've lived on my £20 a week budget. I know how to budget. Money is a drive for me. I'd be, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. Soon, they'll be trading with genuine money, and the profits and losses will be real exposing the novice traders to a whole new level of pressure. The prospect doesn't scare Emil Coleman, a 30-year-old fight promoter from Toxteth in Liverpool. But for me, it's about validation. People assume when they look at me, this is me. I'm many different things, and I want to be able to prove that maybe I can be a trader as well. The British Chambers of Commerce says the economy faces a serious risk of recession. Fresh concerns about the health of banks around the world have again undermined share prices. At one point, shares... ...today in the stock market, with the FTSE down over 80 points a short... Day one, Monday morning, 5 a.m. With training over and the credit crisis looming, their lives as traders begin. Entrepreneur and single mum Caroline Taysom is leaving her four-year-old twin girls in the care of her mother to travel from Winchester to the city. I think the skills that I've gained, you know, self-control, stamina, determination, um, real desire for business success, um, are going to work incredibly well within the trading arena. 20-year-old Oki Imuhwede from Tottenham is partway through an economics and maths degree. 
the nature of trading is that money can come and go in such a flowing way that it's almost like a living, breathing thing. It's important that you keep all of the reins in so that you can control it. Highly ambitious, these next two months will reveal whether he has what it takes to become a city trader. Finally, environmentalist Dr. Sam Duby, the unlikeliest of all the traders, is taking part to find out whether it's possible to trade ethically and still make money. A good trader has to have such a good idea of what's happening in the world, has to be so aware of the wars that are going on in Africa, the, the droughts that are happening in India, the floods in America, yet the only focus is on the financial aspect of it. And that's a real problem. The eight rookie traders have been given their very own trading floor in the heart of London's Square Mile. Complete with computer terminals plugged directly into the world's stock markets, they have everything they need to start trading. And the world's most scrutinized but least understood institution will be revealed as never before. Their first two weeks of trading will be critical. A million dollars for me is very significant and I can't afford to lose it. If I lose it, it's a disaster. If I lose half of it, it's half a disaster, which is still a disaster. If I lost 5%, it's humiliation. If I lose anything, it's terrible. How's everyone feeling? First morning? Early Rosie, start? Yeah. Although Lex Van Dam is supplying the money, he's appointed a supervisor to be his eyes and ears. An eight-year veteran of the city, Anton Creel retired from trading two years ago at the age of 27, a millionaire. I know the feeling around the table is quite laid back and like quite laissez-faire this morning because it's the first day. But like you've got, I mean, the, the news and stuff in the morning, you've got to be really military and like really, you know, get into what is going on in the world, you know, and then you can try and make sense of it, yeah. right? Okay. But you know, the, the hours between six and 7.30 are absolutely crucial to your day. Right, market's opening in one minute. Um, let's go make some money. These eight novices will operate together as a hedge fund. If they're smart enough, they should be able to make money whether share prices go up or down. But before anyone can get a bonus, the fund will have to be in profit at the end. So individually, they must invest wisely because all decisions made will affect everyone. Especially Lex Van Dam. Hello. I have Lex on the phone for you. Okay. Busy running his own hedge fund, Lex will phone Anton regularly to be kept up to date. You just make sure that the people trade. Right. That they trade their own opinions. Right. That you don't tell them what to do. I mean, it's hard to know if these people actually really understand that this is not a game, but this is real money, this is my money. I've worked hard to earn it, and I don't want a bunch of uh, people who don't care to piss it away. Of course. You know, if I'm going to suffer, they will suffer with me. So your role is, you know, you need to make sure that people appreciate the risk. Right. Okay, well, good luck. I'll All right, man. Go. Cheers. All right, speak soon, yeah? Bye. Thank you, bye. There may be a public perception of what a trader actually is, which is loads of money, Ferraris, wild parties, lots of women, drugs, going out all the time, blah, blah, blah. Well, I dare anyone to try this for a month. See how much it affects your life. You seriously do earn your money. The big firms get their pound of flesh, you know? And, you know, these guys, they've got a lot to learn in a very short space of time. It'll be interesting over the next couple of days who actually has the confidence in themselves to take their trade idea and put the trades on. It is a baptism of fire. For the first two weeks, the rookie traders have been given £25,000 each to play with. The market's open. And through brokers, they finally get their chance to trade the world's stock markets. I'm being really indecisive. <laughs> I know, yeah. that's what I'm... I can't sit on the fence, can we, for, forever? I, I say it's performance anxiety, which I need to get over. You know, my brain's not flowing like it should because I'm thinking about it too much. 
I think the biggest battle is with your own mind, <laughs> because you're confronted by so much information, and just generating that in your, own, in your head uh, and, and working it through, because you can kind of justify anything to yourself when you speak to someone else, see what you're thinking, but ultimately it's going to be you who, you know, will go and put that trade on and will kind of be uh, measured on its success or its non-success. 406p, 46p. 63-year-old Simon is the oldest of the novice traders and has spent the last 30 years working as an IT engineer for IBM. I love knowing how things work and why they work and, you know, I've got enough sort of statistical knowledge to be able to cope, I hope, and therefore uh, I'd like to give it a go. Okay, uh, right, I'd like to buy, please, uh, 400... British gas. He's the first to call the brokers and make a trade. Uh, current price is uh, 12.04 offered. Okay, 12.04. Fine. Buy 400, Buy. 12.04. That is all done for you, sir. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Yay! Well done, Simon. <laughs> Spend some money. Right. I took the plunge, decided to uh, place the trade for um, British Gas. I'm hoping it's going to um, rise gently over the next few weeks. Its lowest today was 12.03, 12.04. Whoops, it's just gone down to 12.03. <laughs> what is in danger of getting neurotic about this? But you just have to move on and concentrate on the rest. I'll probably remember this uh, the trading decision for the rest of my life. You know, it's the first one I've made. It's a uh, big excitement. And uh, let's hope it's been successful. To control risk, the traders can only invest £5,000 in any one stock. Done. Uh -huh. Believing British gas is a safe bet, Simon's invested the maximum allowed. He's gone right up to his maximum position size immediately. Right. That's it. Okay. All right. If you do that in a portfolio as a professional, to me, you have absolute maximum conviction that this stock is going up. All right and it's almost like you can't be wrong. If the stock does nothing for three days or goes down for three days consistently, you know, it's gonna drive him absolutely mental. Oh, look at this, it's down at 1186. That's awful. I keep saying I mustn't let it upset me, but of course um, I keep thinking I wonder what it's doing and that is in fact distracting me from the main job I'm supposed to be doing, the main job I want to do now, which is look for other trades that will actually perhaps compensate in performance. Right, I'm going to close this chart and concentrate on my next job. If I, I, you get neurotic staring at it and that's definitely a mistake. Oh, this is awful, 11.85, oh my god. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking at Halfords, uh, the code HFD, and then, uh, can I get 100 shares of that then, please? 100. 100. By the end of their second day, several novice traders have taken their first dip into the markets. I'm looking at Admiral. Can I get a price on Domino's, please, DOM? Can I short that if it goes to 189, please? 500. Ultimately, they have two methods of trading available to them. Buying long, simply making money if the share price increases, or selling short, a complex deal that involves borrowing, selling, and then buying back shares. This allows the trader to make a profit when the value of a stock goes down. Rupert, it's Caroline Corney from Traders. Hello, Caroline. Hello. I want to, well, I'm good. I want to place my first trade, please. That's what you find, which stock you look Okay, at, well, I'd like to buy Tate & Lyle, Tate LM. 42-year-old single mum and entrepreneur Caroline has always wanted to work in the city. That's all done. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, okay. Done, thank bye bye. You. bye. Oh, I've done it. <laughs> Although she's determined to succeed, she finds the idea of selling short or profiting from the losses of others hard to stomach. Um, it just, it does, it seems awful that you can sit here as a trader and wish that the value of the company would would go down so that you can make money on it. It's really um, morally quite bizarre thing to do. Yeah, and somebody who yeah, spent a lot of years building up a company to sort of lose the, uh, lose the control that you have over that just because maybe another company in your sector is, um, you know, is performing particularly bad and you get pulled down with them, it just seems horrendous. Bollocks. <laughs> That's a real bugger. 
former vet Cleo is less concerned about the ethical issues of trading. Shown during training to be a highly intelligent, structured thinker, it's believed she has the greatest potential in the group. I think it's an environment that I'd be really good in. It's uh, fast-paced, which I thrive in. It's pressure-driven, again, which I thrive in. And I love the way that these huge macroeconomic issues impact on all the stocks and this type of thing and how everything is interrelated. I just find it really, really interesting. It's a global event that gives Clio her first trade. Let's go straight to our top story this morning. Investors reacting to mountain instability within the Middle East. It obviously has everybody here concerned, both on a personal level as well as a collective business confidence level as the uh, saber rattling goes forward. A missile test in Iran causes Middle East instability. And as a result, oil prices begin to rise sharply. It spells bad news for heavy fuel consumers. Jumping into the market, Clio's quick to short sell British Airways, betting their share price will fall as their profits get hit by rising oil prices. It's a good deal, but her caution is getting the better of her. She's only traded 200 shares, by far the smallest investment of the group. You know, it's more, it's more, I wanted to just get through it. I know that sounds awful. Um, and I know that's completely the wrong rationale, but I prefer to place one small little trade because it's the first time that I've ever dilly-dallied with anything like this. Oh, look, see, it's down. Two more. <laughs> <laughs> <It's on. laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm going to keep myself under wraps now. It's just the first one. <laughs> I get really overexcited. Right <laughs> sorry, guys. Really sorry. I'm going to control myself now. Oh, my God. It's just gone again. How much have you made? One P? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I know it's weird. <laughs> I'm really sorry, the time is wrong. It's like a little bit overexcited. Right, what have you done? She was crazy. Okay. <laughs> Two five, yeah? Yeah. Quantity 200. I don't know, baby. Uh huh. That's it, cool. Well known for their high quality products. <laughs> so exciting. Right, enough of that. Put your emotions on one side and mm. head on to the inside. The life of a trader is all consuming. Long days begin with very early mornings. The team is expected to be in the office by 6 a.m working out their strategies well before the markets open at 8. Their screens come alive. Falling shares turning red, rising shares blue. Great cafe and 500 shorts. Sports Direct. Yeah. Everything coming out about it is bad. After three days of trading, the team has so far only invested 10% of the £200,000 currently at their disposal. But it's not the amount that's worrying, it's the commitment of some of the traders. If you leap with joy or... Simon? Yeah? What price of BBG Group in the auction? 11.68. 11... My stop is 11.60. They're 11.59 now. What price are they in the auction? You're out, mate. I think you'd better check. Away from his desk when the market opened, <laughs> Simon is unaware that his shares in British Indeed. Gas are plummeting and losing the team yeah, money. <laughs> oh. You may recall I placed a trade yesterday on British Gas. Um, you've been closed out. Oh, bother. You have no position yet in British Gas. Right, so what was the closing price, please? Simon's shares have fallen so sharply, they've been sold on automatically. Yeah. 11.58. Right. Okay. okay. Known as a stop loss, this is an order with the broker to close a trade if it loses too much money. Gloom and despondency. Overnight, Simon's trade has cost the team 250 pounds. Just forget about it. No, I'm not. I'm not stressed. I, I just want 
to explain why why I did what I did and yeah, yeah, yeah. to see whether I could or should cool. have done we'll anything have, differently. You we'll know? have a proper chat about it yeah. later. Later. But, uh, yeah, mid-morning. now. Absolutely. Don't worry about what's happened this morning. No, 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 I haven't. No, honest, trust uh, me. As it stands now, as it stands now, you've got no positions. That's right. I need so to generate some ideas. The slate, is, the, the slate is clean, so start again. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm taking it yeah. very much in that way, vein. Cool. All right, mate. A little bit concerned about his behaviour. Very lackadaisical. And, uh... Right. You know, I had to shout over to him. <sighs> to be honest with you, I'm just a little bit pissed off. And I just don't, you know, you cannot behave like that on a trading desk. You know, it just shows, it just shows a really bad attitude towards investing somebody else's money in the market. If you behave like that in the real world, in the real world of trading, like, your career is going to be very short-lived. There are, however, some within the group who are showing real promise. Both fight promoter Emil and Sam the environmentalist have made money. You know what, I feel a bit ill when I place one of these things. I really don't like it. Gets the jitters. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's a I rush. really don't like, like it. I don't find it a pleasant rush though. I find it a really uncomfortable feeling. Oh do you? Yeah. And though I kinda get I, I kinda like that adrenaline thing. It makes me feel exactly like I felt when I was a kid lying. I think it's just because I'm making a decision based on a best guess. And I'm not, I'm not used to guessing, I'm used to being yeah, but don't, sure about it. don't you it. think this shows the fallacy of it, that the fact of that, like, you know, in reality, no matter how many charts we look at, no matter yeah, how yeah. everything else, we go on how we feel. That's exactly. No, it's no like any else. gambling. It's why, it's why I'm not a gambling person. Yeah, yeah, I don't gamble. There's only one person left in the group who is yet to make a trade. Having just left the army, Mike now wants to be a professional trader. Half the... The game here is, is timing. You can have the world's best trade if you like, but if, you're, if your timing is wrong, you, you don't make a profit, or worse, you make a loss. Beginning to think I should maybe just grow a pair and get on in there and then just, just work it as it goes. But um, it's just get the, the, you know, just like parachuting. It's taking that first step that's difficult. And then actually after that you're fine. Well, until you've got to pull the red handle, maybe. <laughs> I don't want to have to be pulling any red handles around here, that's the thing. You've got to take risk to make money. Of course you can lose, but if you're not invested, you cannot make money. It might as well just be in the bank earning 5%. It's concerning, because you cannot succeed in this business behaving like that. You'll never make money. you do. The last thing the economy needs right now right. is for the, the standard mortgage spigot to be turned off. Uh, in terms of these two companies, they own or guarantee about half of one trillion dollars of U.S. mortgages. Take a look at Freddie Mac. It is off by more than one third, losing one third of its value this morning. The government is going to be absolutely bound and determined to do whatever it takes to keep the money flowing to home mortgages. Only a week into trading, and the novice traders are dealt a heavy blow. US mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac hit the rocks, and the world's markets reel in shock. The trading screens turn red, showing a massive fall in shares across the globe, as 35 billion pounds of investment vanishes in a matter of minutes. Like, look at the dollar versus the euro and the pound now, right? The dollar is likely, if this continues, to get smoked. In the end, the taxpayer has to plug that gap, right? Yeah. The US government has come out and said that if Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac go to zero, then they'll guarantee the debt. The market's taking it negatively because the government's basically admitted that there's a possibility that they could go to zero, right? And if they bail them out, we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars, right? And who, who ends up paying for it? The US consumer. I mean, to anyone who's been in the industry a long time, this is like proper scary stuff, you know? And the entire basis of the US economy changes if this happens. I mean, the US is over for a generation if this happens, potentially. But this is why the markets are so volatile. This is why the world is in a complete mess at the moment and no one knows what to do, because there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Three 
and that, 31975, yeah? 375, thousand. okay. And that's a thousand, thousand shares that you've bought. That's it, mate, yeah. Great, thanks a lot, Lee. The global credit crisis has spread to British shores. And Sam, the ethical trader in the group, Good Lord, that was rapid rise. spots a chance to make money. The mortgage lender Alliance in Leicester has now found a buyer, allowing the company to shore up its finances after losing two-thirds of its value over the past year. Now, Spain's biggest bank Banking Santander giant Santander has announced a takeover of Alliance in Leicester. Quick to react, he buys a thousand shares. They rock it and make the team an instant 200 pounds. Out of Alliance in Leicester. Good you got out of 32 and a half? Yeah. Good man. 328. See, hello. He's just sold them. Superstar mate, three thirty-two and a half. Yesterday, I read a news story on Alliance and Leicester, so um, I bought some shares in them. Uh, that made the share price go up, and I sold them. I made some money from reading a news story. I didn't do anything. Um, that's that's the nature of the game, really. You're not doing anything at all, really. Impressed by Sam's successful investment, retired IBM employee Simon also jumps into financials. Hi. You okay? Not sure yet. I've just, I placed earlier a buy limit order on Bradford and Bingley. Okay. And it's just been filled, so. Oh, cool. Okay. Hope for the best. All right. Buying long into Bradford and Bingley, he hopes to see their share price rise. But less than an hour after he places the trade, its share price plummets. I'm afraid Hello. my sh long in Bradford and Bingley didn't work. Really? <laughs> Bloody hell. Sorry about that. It, it's very frustrating. This is just an unbelievably complex business. You've got to keep your emotions in check, you've got to do the analysis, you've got to do your homework. There's so many balls to keep in the air. And um, maybe different personalities are better at coping with short-term decisions, and maybe I'm better to concentrate on a few long-term decisions, long-term trades, rather than leap in on the basis of follow me, as it were, which is what, really what I did with Bradford and Bingley. Simon's decision to buy into the UK's largest buy-to-let mortgage provider at a time when many are going to the wall Obviously ridiculous, right? Hasn't gone unnoticed by Lex and Anton. Clearly his mind's just in the wrong place. Like, he's, yeah. not, he's not, like, it's not just him. I mean, there's other people in the group that just, the whole general level of focus of the group is just too low. Like, these guys are just not intense enough. Of greater concern to Anton and Lex is that those who should be showing the most promise are also struggling. Oh, hi. Um, it's clear from Trace again. Is that Luke? Hi, Luke. I put a, um, a sell order in with Rupert for GSK, GlaxoSmithKline. Feeling the pressure, Cleo has sold okay, all her stock much. and now has nothing invested. Oh, man, look, now it's gone straight back Stupid idiot folks. I think, um... I think there might be a bit of an issue with, uh, with Clea, because right. she's just traded out of her only two positions, which would seem to work to a tiny anyway, and now she's got zero risk. Well, maybe she's just re re uh, rethinking it, no? Maybe, but I think the way she did it, she lost conf she's lost confidence. I've just taken a loss and it's gone down. You know what? I don't like trading. You want them to generate ideas, and you want the book to go up. And you want them to be confident, so you want them to, you want them to be upbeat. But at the same time, you've got to, you know, you've got to, they've got to be disciplined because some yeah. of the stuff they're doing is nuts. So far, the team have only invested forty thousand out of a possible two hundred thousand pounds. They've been trading in the worst market conditions seen in years. And although they've had some successes, overall, they've yet to make a penny. It's definitely been noted over the last couple of days that some, a lot of crucial things in the market that's been coming out has been missed by people. Things like being on the desk when the market opens, popping off for 30-minute lunches, 
like it's just absolutely not acceptable. Yeah. I, I, I had in eight years two lunches outside the office, okay, as a team to make money. You really need to be here because if you're not, you don't stand the chance. We're in the worst trading conditions that we've been in for a generation. <laughs> but if you want to give yourselves the best chance of making serious cash and beating the professionals, you're just going to have to step it up like massively, get and take it to the next level. I mean, nobody ever said this was easy, but God, it is a lot more difficult than certainly I ever expected. It's extremely difficult. I think it's just going to be quite a steep learning curve for us. Of course it is. I really. know that. No, <laughs> one's, no one is you know, doubting that whatsoever. Days. All right. Thank you. Are you okay with all that, yeah? It's we difficult, it's, isn't it? It's fucking impossible. Yeah, but it's, not it's difficult. We know that. I don't think I can try any harder, that's all. No, but you can. No, I can't. Anyway, let's leave it. <coughs> Simon, you definitely... Look. No, let me place my old tray. I'd rather do that right now. OK. Well, let's talk about it later, yeah? The end of week one. And so far, retired soldier Mike has only dabbled in the market. Mike knows he needs to make money if he's to see a bonus. And with aspirations to become a full-time trader, he wants his first meaningful trade to be a statement of intent. I'm just extremely, extremely competitive. I wear a heart rate monitor so that I don't run too fast. Sometimes I have to rein myself in because it, you know, it, it forces you into places where you don't, you know, you don't really want to be, like racing my girlfriend, getting dressed and things like that. 1056 or 105.75. 105.6 or 105.75, yeah. His trade idea is a highly controversial and risky one. Just looking at the opening prices on HBOS, there is, yeah. a, you know, people are staring at each other, you know, across the city. You know, right. who's going to win this game of bluff? A cash flow crisis for Britain's largest bank, HBOS, has forced them into a rights issue, which means going to their shareholders and asking for more money. Mike has calculated that the rights issue should go well, sending its share price up. ka -ching. OK? That's okay. a good scenario. That's, that's the side of the bet we want to be on. Right, but we're not but to cover his position, so like, Mike has decided he also needs to short-sell German bank okay. Allianz. As the underwriters yeah. of the rights issue, they will have to pick up any shortfall, a potentially huge liability which could see their own share price fall. This trading strategy is known as hedging. It's the essence of how a hedge fund works. If he's right, he'll make more money on this deal than everyone's trades put together. Hi, it's Rupert. Rupert, hi, it's Market Traders. How are you doing, mate? Hi, mate. Yeah, good, thank you. ALZ.de. So 110. 110. 23. Euros, right? That's right. Sold 46 uh, yep. Allianz at 110 spot 23 euros. Confirmed. Uh, H Boss, H B O S L N, bought. Yes. One four one nine two seventy eight spot two five. That's right. Lovely, nice in business with you, mate. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye bye. Well done. <sighs> I mean, there's risk in every trade, but you know, I've worked through the numbers, and my, you know, my downside risk is is far smaller than my upside gain, and if it comes off. We'll, you know, we'll make a lot of money for the team. The second week of trading, and as world markets become more unstable, the pressure to make money intensifies. The government has come close to admitting that the fiscal rules it set itself for managing the economy can no longer be met. The Bank of England has kept interest rates unchanged at 5% as it struggles to respond to crisis. Insisting no decision had been taken on rewriting debt levels, were careful not to dismiss the idea. Everybody's thinking of uh, the credit crisis at the moment. Uh -huh. And they're all, you know, basing all the ideas of that credit crisis. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's total, total risk. It feels like we only look at one trade. Which yeah. Everybody's obsessed by this thing. Then the other thing is like, 
you have to tell people if they keep trading in such small size, mm. you'll never make any money. Okay. And they're not going to get more money, and they're not going to get paid at the end of the, the period because they haven't made any money. So they okay. need to trade a little bit larger. So basically, like we're going to first week. First week boring was fine. Second week boring is not so good anymore. For this hedge fund to be successful and make money, everyone must invest their cash. Failure to do so could result in their removal from the team. Please rally. At the beginning, Cleo was highlighted as someone with great trading potential. But after starting with immense self-belief, her confidence is collapsing. With no trades in place, she must get invested to stay in the game. Why didn't I just bloody buy it? She's actually really scared about trading, which is a little bit concerning. I think I might have to go and speak to her later, take her out of the, out of the office or something, because yeah, I can see that her head's a bit all over the place, and she's really scared about pulling the trigger. I just can't commit to it. I just can't commit to it, you know? You don't, look, it's very, very difficult, this business, OK? And you know, it's the whole. It's hot. It, it's difficult to I'm take. I'm a perfectionist. To you take know? that, to take that abstract thought process and that uh, those ideas, those trade ideas, yeah, and put them into practice and then manage risk. Okay, yeah. they're two really different different skill sets. But you're indecisive because you're a perfectionist, right? And you can't have indecision in the business. I know. I'm so right? aware of this. Okay. Yeah, I'm telling myself the whole time. Nothing mentioned, nothing gained. Just put it on, just put it on. And then I just sit there and fanny about. Just accept do that. Nothing. Just accept that you cannot be right 100% of the time. It's impossible. I know. It's absolutely impossible. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated at my lack of knowledge. Massively frustrated by it, and that spills over in this, you know, this this sense of being. And I honestly, I feel like a lamb to the slaughter at the moment. I now, now I feel pressure that I've really got to find trades to put on. And you know, whilst it's good to have a bit of pressure in this uncertain market, I don't feel that that's necessarily the best thing because the last thing I want to do is put on trades just so I've got positions but I'm almost feeling like I'm being pressured now to put on trades purely for that reason, just so I've got positions, just so my capital's invested. But when the market is this volatile, I don't think, you know, I think unless you can really, really read it, then you're a bit of a fool, really. Oh, God, look where it's gone. No wonder it's... <sighs> for his third trade, Simon believed he was playing safe investing £3,000 in insurance company Royal Sun Alliance. I've got an open position on RSA, which I'm getting a bit nervous about. It's had a terrible day. It's, um... um unfortunately, majority of them have today. I was thinking of, of lightening my position by buying, say, 800. That would be one-third of them, roughly. Yeah. And then lowering my stop to stay in the market for the rest. You could do that. Do you want to know? Um, right, let's, let's make a decision. Could I um, buy 800? Buy 800? At whatever the market price is now? It's uh, 50 and about 4. Simon has just made a fundamental mistake. To reduce his risk, he should have sold 800 shares. Hang on a sec, you've got a sell stop loss on you? Yeah? Uh, no, I've got a buy stop loss. You've got a I, I beg your pardon, I, I'm so sorry. I've, I've gone completely the wrong way. Right, this yeah, was a, this more, was a buy. Ah, well, could you sell them again? That was a mistake. Simon, I'll be selling you sixteen hundred now. Is that correct? Um, correct. 
price to sell them at 15 spot one, so you're making a loss on that. Oh, shit, just my luck. So let's just say this again very slowly. Um, you have sold... 1,600. 1,600 at... 115. 115. Spot one. Spot one. Okay, that's amended for you as well. Okay, done. Thank you. Cheers, Sam. Cheers, bye. bye. <sighs> In the space of a two minute phone call, Simon has cost the team two hundred pounds. So far, every deal he's made has lost money. I made a small mistake. So he basically shit himself. Yeah. Went to sell a third of the position and ended up buying it. Right. Right. And then he realized what he'd done and then tried, you know, went to sell double the amount to get his position correct. And then he's. And so then he, he bought instead of selling. Yeah. If you say buy, when you want to say sell, you know, it just means that, you know, you've got shit for brains. Well, yeah. That's what course. it means. You know, it's totally switched off. He's panicked, shit himself, lost his mind, and done the trade the wrong way around. I'm pretty annoyed because, like, there's mistakes and there's mistakes. Yeah. We have to think about what we're going to do about this. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Cleo was a bit of a, has been a bit of an issue in the last 24 hours. She's actually scared of having positions. Right. We were off the desk today for an hour and a half, and I've got shit to do. You spent an hour and a half with her. Yeah, because. Mate, she's, she's crying. Do you know what I mean? Who can cry for an hour and a half? Someone who's never traded before, who's scared of trading, one week into this exercise, right? That's okay. a person who can cry for an hour and a half. Great. One has shit for brains and the other one starts crying. We're doing well here. Yeah. It's judgment day for Mike's yeah. biggest trade. The results of the HBOS rights issue are in. And it's not the news Mike wanted to hear. HBOS, Britain's biggest mortgage lender, raised about four billion pounds in a rights offer to shore up its balance sheet. The trouble is, most of the shareholders didn't actually take up their rights to the shares. Today, shareholders bought just eight percent of the stock on offer, leaving the underwriters Morgan Stanley and Dresdner Climor with a bit of a headache. Underwriters will try and get uh, subscribers. Do you know anyone who's long? Somebody's long HBOS. Yeah. What are you guys? Yeah, it's Mike, yeah. yeah it's just time to keep an eye on the place this morning, because... Uh, yeah, he's on it, yeah. It's not very good news on them, either. No, no, no. With HBOS falling, Mike's short sell in German bank Allianz isn't working either. Come on, HBOS. Despite the problems, its share price is unaffected. I'm hanging on to my arse here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, my, my reason what is, it, what is your ratio telling me? Your ratio? It tells you that I'm down about 4%. I'm right on the brink. Come on, bitch. For sake. His £8,000 pairs trade is now losing money. It's not good, not good. And he's provoked the wrath of Lex Van Damme. Oh. Hello. Hello, I have Lex on the line. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hey, how you doing? Hey, man, how's it going? Okay. Is he age boss? Yeah. Does Mike know what's going on? I don't know. He hasn't spoken to me. It was madness itself to go long age boss. You know, he's, he's been waiting for weeks to trade. And then this is the best thing he can do. It was just stupid. Okay. You know, he's just sitting there in the ocean. And maybe the wave goes the right direction. And maybe it goes the wrong direction. And we both know the way they're trading at the moment is always going to go the wrong direction. So I've just, I've, listen, I've just got to be careful. Really go. All right, cool. Bye, bye. Yeah, bye. Mike. I reckon I need to cut that position. We're down about five, just under six percent. Okay, so you, the cut's there. Cut it, move on. Don't feel bad about it. 
shit happens. Shit happens, and this is just one trade out of yeah. many that will happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. All right. So if you want to do that, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, he's gutted, but like I'm, I'm looking at this personally as a trade that could have gone massively right and a little bit wrong, and it's gone a little bit wrong. You know, he spent an entire weekend probably thinking about it, walked in and lost money, right? And yeah. that's just the life of a trader. Mint. Hello, Luke. It's Mike. Hi, Mike. Age boss. Sell one four one nine. At uh, put it in for two sixty seven spot two five if you can do it. Made that's done for you, then. Age boss. Okay. okay. Uh, ALV dot DE. I'm a buyer of forty six. Done for you, mate. Fuck. Great. Done. Thank you. Cheers. Mike's trade has cost the team five hundred pounds. That's a um, that's quite a loss to um, to take on board. Yeah, and the bitch is trying to go back in and um, and find another one. The biggest mortgage lender, Halifax Bank of Scotland, has announced that its statutory first half profits plunged by 72% to 848 million. The bank blamed the loss on the credit crunch and also reported an increase in bad debt. As the traders reach the end of their second week of trading, they're faced with their biggest test so far. We are awaiting numbers, earnings reports uh, from Citigroup. They are due out any second from now. We'll bring you those numbers as soon as they cross. We are Citigroup, the, the world's largest bank, is about to announce an earnings report. In the financial world, this is a global event and will have a massive effect on the world's stock markets. If the team properly hedge their investments, the fund should be able to cope with anything the market throws at it. I'd like to sell a go short. Yep. With market confidence in the banking sector at an all-time low, red day. Mean red day. the novice traders have predicted Sorry, the figure will be bad. Four, One thousand would be convinced there's an opportunity to make some quick cash. They all go short. Two sixty-three. Well, I'd like to put in an order to short nine hundred of them, please. <laughs> okay, I want to sell short. Six ninety eight, seven pound and a half. Uh, six ninety seven, seven hundred. Okay, I'll sell. Uh, can I can I have six ninety eight? Uh, it's not actually bid. That's six ninety seven bid. Okay. You, you wanted to sell it six ninety eight. Yeah, sell short. That's my biggest trade. How much? Nearly three grand. Ooh la la. <laughs> back, back in the game. Okay. Hi, who's that? Hi, Reva. It's Emil from Hello, Trades. Hi, you okay? Can you look at Domino's for me? D O M M. In total, they short sell 16,000 shares, a massive £41,000, in the hope that prices will fall. Yes, baby, go down, go down. But not one of the traders has hedged their investments by going long in case prices should rise. A potentially calamitous mistake. Well, it looks like that these numbers are better than had been estimated, Carol, and we are actually seeing as we speak the futures really pairing the losses very rapidly as I look at my Bloomberg terminals. You can see what the shares are doing in the pre-market already, up by 3%. Sell. So, sell. 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 With that news. Is there something RPS else? Is there something else? Is there Noise is going up. Only a fraction. So is there something else? For the novice traders, it's the worst news possible. The figures are better than expected. The markets immediately rally and share prices rise across the board. This morning's short selling frenzy has left the team massively exposed and they're losing money fast. Just making sure that you're aware of what's going on because obviously you are pretty short and you don't get tired out. Yeah, three, three From a position of profit, the group are now facing a heavy loss. 
it was like Monopoly today, it's great. <laughs> Everyone's just gone for it. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite a nice atmosphere actually in the office, even though we're all hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging money. It's, uh, it's absolutely typical. I think a lot of people got into banks because there was a hubbub about banks yesterday, and um, everyone has got absolutely tranced on it. Um, if it was one person getting absolutely tranced, I think it would be quite difficult. But because everyone's in the same position, um, yeah, it's fine. I think the mood, the mood is pretty good considering. They've been trading for a fortnight. And so far, they've only lost Lex's money. Hello. Good afternoon. I have Lex on the phone asking for you. Okay, yeah, coming through, thank you. Hello. So what's the PL? I'm not gonna like. You're not gonna like. I'm not gonna like it, yeah. Down two and a half rand. You're joking. No. Are you serious? Serious. Wow. That's a lot. You know, I am actually starting to get a little bit upset. I'm not the type of guy to, you know, humiliate people in front of a group or give people shit for not for no reason, you know. But you know, if I have to give them shit, it's for their own good. Because if I don't, Lex will walk in one day and just destroy somebody in front of everybody. And that's not gonna be good for anybody. Oh, we're getting our fucking faces what's ripped off, that's what's going on. Two. The people who are doing their conquers today are people who've shorted on the open and bought nothing against it. Right? Yeah. Market moves half a percent, and look how much money you can lose from a half a percent move in the market. You've been Muppets, like you've shorted something naked from after all the conversations that we've had, right? And, not, and it hasn't even entered your mind to buy a UK bank against it, given that financials are the most volatile sector in the world right now. Yeah. You've got to learn from your mistakes. It's risk management. Naked punting is for idiots. And if, if you're down two grand a day as a group, yeah? And you multiply that by 45 days that we've got left, you're going to be down 90 grand on 500 grand. What do you want me to do? Like, put everyone up against the wall with a gun and to the head and say, fucking manage risk. You're trading with somebody else's money. You know? If this was my money, I'd be so scared. You've got to seriously think about what you're doing and the risk that you're taking. Because we walked in this morning, and I don't think anybody thought we'd be down two grand this morning, right? No. no one thought that. But guess what? Four hours later, we are. This is the week where they need to make some money. Mm. Oh, he's going to kill me. I don't need to feel this self-worth at the moment. We are under Russian invasion and the Russian occupation right now. Turkey, Azerbaijan and well, Armenia, the countries with border. Like, this is gun to the head time. Fine decision, I will sell them. Now. Look, I'm not telling you what to do. No, I know I'm... you're not. Christ's sake. If it's legal, the morality is irrelevant. Is that what you're saying? So, I mean, it's a bad world. I think it really brings out the bastard in you. The right. last time I had trauma like this was getting divorced. If people walk out because they can't take it, so be it. Continuing the city theme over on BBC Four, Jerry Robinson meets Britain's first ever venture capitalist. And Charlie Brooker's got a thing about TV shows that come with a mission to achieve. And he's firing off again next on BBC Two.